Good. So this week is going to be the, we're going to celebrate the birthday of the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, the Rebbe Rashab. I showed you pictures of him before, the Rebbe Rashab. The Rebbe Rashab, Rabbi Sholom Dov Ber. Rabbi Sholom Dov Ber. Rabbi Sholom Dov Ber, he lived, he passed away in 1920. Passed away in 1920. And um, uh, he was very holy. He he was the one that began the the yeshivas of Chabad, and he wrote Maimorim discourses, very long, very deep, very beautiful, explaining almost every aspect of of uh, of reality of of Hasidut, of Kabbalah. Beautiful. Okay, <clears throat> but he was a very frail person. He was a very frail person. This is a story about this frailty. He was a very frail person, and there was many times where he had to go. Uh, to, to, to be on his own and uh, and to rest when he was around the, the the boys he was always always felt the the uh his obligations and his that he had to be with the boys etc anyway so this shabbat this this story is talking about the one shabbat he went to a a resting place he had a whatever is a cabin or someplace and that was um far away that was far away from uh, I guess it was this was in Lubavitch, so it was far away from Lubavitch, <clears throat> and uh, either that or it was in Rostov. I don't know. In the end, the end of his life, he went was in Rostov for the last few years when the when World War II began. I guess in 1912, 1913, when it came over to Russia, so he ran away. So, he, so maybe it was in Rostov. Anyway, so he was in the city of Rostov, and he. <clears throat> Left the young the boys in the yeshiva for a Shabbat. He went to this like small village wherever it was, and that's where he was for Shabbat. <clears throat> so while he was away, <clears throat> one of the young boys over there suddenly got a high fever and diarrhea. And that was a sign of cholera. Cholera was a very terrible disease. That it was it was actually a plague that swept across, and it was majority first of all it was very contagious and it was very <clears throat> uh deadly a, a very high percentage of people that got cholera they died <clears throat> and one of the signs that they would die was that fever would go up and they <clears throat> they would become they would have diarrhea they would have diarrhea and the fever would just go, go higher and higher and they would have diarrhea the only cure that they, they, they didn't really have a cure for it. The only thing that they could do to alleviate it a little bit, and it worked to a certain degree, was uh, to, to boil tea. Boil tea, that's all they had. They didn't have back then antibiotics and things like this. This is in the 1900s, whatever. It was, early 1900s. <clears throat> so that's what they had when they had cholera. That's what they did. So one boy... He uh, suddenly had a high temp and on Shabbat, he got a high temperature, a, a fever, and he had diarrhea. And so the other boys, very, uh, <clears throat> very afraid of catching the disease, so they moved out. You know, they left them whatever it is, water to drink, or whatever, and they moved out of the out of the. They moved away from him, away from his room. They moved out to finally, and they didn't know what to do. And they, someone said, okay, we have to give him hot water. But the, it seems the hot water boiler, the fire went out or whatever. In any case, they would have to boil water. So it was a matter of life and death. So it's permissible to light the fire and bring water. So one young man there said, <clears throat> I'm not going to light the fire. Oh, no, the sick person himself. <clears throat> sick person himself with a fever. He said, if you bring me tea, heat it up for Tea, tea on Shabbat. I'm not going to drink it. I'm not going to drink it. It's forbidden to light a fire on Shabbat. They said, "Yeah, it's forbidden to light a fire, but your your life is in danger. It, it, if if to save a life, for sure, you're, it's permissible." So he said, um, "What's this here?" So he said, "Only if the Rebbe said it's okay, will I drink the tea. If not, then I'm not going to drink it. I'm not going to drink it." So they said, you know, come on, be reasonable. The Rebbe is, you know, you want to get to the Rebbe. It's like a two-hour run. If you want to run, we have to run there and run back. He said, okay, I'll wait. <clears throat> so sure enough, early in the morning, first thing in the morning, 
they couldn't go in the nighttime. It was dangerous, but there was no lighting. So some young man, I, I understood from the story, it was a man called Perlov. He lived in Australia afterwards. And he ran. He was a young boy then. And he ran the two hours to get to the Rebbe. It took him less than two hours. He got to the Rebbe huffing and puffing. His wife was sitting on the porch. Her husband, the Rebbe, was just getting ready to pray. He had a tallet over his shoulder. He was getting ready to pray. <clears throat> and uh, she saw the boy running. What's wrong? <clears throat> he said, oh, nothing. I just want to talk to the Rebbe. He said, nothing? You came running here for nothing? Just to talk to the Rebbe? What happened? Said, nah, there's a boy that's just a little, a little sick. So sick, what, 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 what has he got? He said, no, it's really nothing. I just, I, I, one of the says, but the Rebbe is busy. You know, he's, he's getting ready to pray. He said, yeah, but it's a little bit urgent. What has he got? He says, well, he has a fever. He has, he has, he's, he's, she says, does he have diarrhea also? Yes. He said, it's cholera. The boy has cholera. Of course you can speak to the Rebbe. It's dangerous. He said, the Rebbe, his wife, he says to his wife, what's, what's wrong? He says, this young man there, he's got cholera. What should we do? So the Rebbe said, well, what's what's wrong? He said, well, he's got a high temperature and he wants to know if we should um, boil water. He said, he's not going to drink the water that we boil because we defiled Shabbat unless the Rebbe says it's okay. So the Rebbe said, well, the boy is right. But just because a person has a little fever, a little diarrhea, it happens. The person... His wife said, but the boy has fever. It's cholera. He's got a fever. He's got a high fever. He's going to bear it. And the rabbi said, no, there's nothing to get excited about. The, the, the boy is all right. He's okay. He just has a little fever. A little, he'll, get, he'll get better. He'll get better. And so he says, so the young man hears this from the rabbi. He'll get better. Yes. There's nothing. A little fever. You're going to boil water every time a person has a little fever. So the boy runs back. <clears throat> And the, the runs back to the now all of the boys are standing outside of the of the uh, of the dormitory where the boy is. No one wants to go in, and he's got a high fever and he's like almost delirious, you know. He's, uh, and he runs inside. Everybody's saying, "Don't go inside! Don't go inside! He's, you know, you'll get the disease. He's going to die." And instead of, <clears throat> so he runs inside, and he, he tells the boys outside. The Rebbe said, "The Rebbe said that he's okay." He said, what are you talking about? He's okay. He's got a high fever. He's going crazy over there. Listen, you can even hear him moaning and yelling from, from, from outside. He says, the Rebbe said it's okay. He said that you should boil water and make tea. I'm going inside. So he runs inside. And here's the boy laying there, blazing high temperature. <clears throat> and he said, the Rebbe said you're healthy. The Rebbe said you're all right. The Rebbe said you're all right. And he grabs a hold of him. He's hugging him. He says, the Rebbe said you're okay. And he's like, you know, on his last breaths, you know, he's already... <clears throat> almost in his death throes. And he says, the Rebbe said, I'm all right. He said, yeah, the Rebbe said that you're healthy. You're okay. He said, oh, the Rebbe said, I'm healthy. And all of a sudden, his temperature started going down. And he started to become more sort of normal. Took some of the water, put it on his forehead. So the Rebbe, <clears throat> he said, all of a sudden, he's all right. And he yelled outside, you don't have to boil the water. Don't have to boil water. It's all right. It's all right. And the boy got better. He got better. So what do we see from the story? This was from eyewitnesses. What do we see from the story? Of course, there's the holiness of the Rebbe, what he said. But the Rebbe didn't get, the boy didn't get better just because the Rebbe said. The, the, the whole thing here is talking about positiveness. The Rebbe was positive. He told the emissary, the emissary became positive. And his positive, that's what became contagious. The Rebbe's certainty, that became contagious for the shliach. And the shliach, he became contagious that he actually brought the young man that was on the verge of the opposite of life to come back alive. And that's the point of this week's, what we're talking about now, a shliach, an emissary. A true emissary is excited and devoted and certain as the one who sends him. And when that happens, is then the results are the results that the one who sent him desired. That's what happened. And that's what can enliven all the Jewish people, right? The Jewish people are also in a bad state, but because we're certain of what the Rebbe says is true, without any doubt, the Mashiach is here and that the whole world is going to reveal its positive potential is because we're excited about this is for sure it's going to happen. Have a good day with Mashiach now. See you all tomorrow, 8.15 in the morning. And thank you very much for coming.